and welcome to another episode of Ghetto Coding. So in today's episode, this being part one of two, as this is a two-parter, we're going to be looking at what is data scaffolding within Entity Framework Core. So before we continue, I do want to apologize to some of the viewers and some of the subscribers. I know some of you have left messages, sent me emails, don't even get me started on the Discord channel. I have had no time to even be present there. So not that long ago, after the first set of videos, I started a software company and my first client is actually involved in healthcare so between COVID-19 and family life I haven't had time to do pretty much anything outside of work and family. So many of you might have not even heard the term of scaffolding. There are other terms for it for example database scaffolding, data scaffolding, entity scaffolding etc. But in context of entity framework and entity framework core scaffolding is the process of generating entity classes so your C-sharp classes based on a current database uh, structure or schema. So in other words, it's the creation of classes, c -sharp classes that represent all the tables, etc., and relationships within your database, along with generating your DB context class. The DB context class being the class within the entity framework uh, structure that allows you to interact and communicate with your databases. So the next question you might be asking is, firstly, how is data scaffolding useful and where would we use it? So you'd find data scaffolding useful when you're following the database first coding approach. In other words, you develop your database first and then bring it into your application. Not where you're using a code first approach where you develop your classes and etc and build your database structure within your application and then migrate it over into your SQL database. So in a real life situation, say for example you have an application you're replacing that already has an existing database that you have to still use. It's a lot easier to simply scaffold that entire database or part of that database structure into your application rather than manually creating the whole database structure yourself within your application. It all sp it speeds things up dramatically. So that brings us to the end of part one. In part two, we'll scaffold an already existing database into a .NET Core web application. 